Hey, it's Shapes. On this day in 1938, one of the most prolific creators of anime and manga was born. Almost exactly 70 years ago, he published his first manga at 15 years old. After 20 years of publishing, he directed his first anime, which turns 50 years old this year. His work is renowned all over the world. His name was Akira Matsumoto, but he went by his pen name. You might recognize his character designs from Interstellar 5555, the slender women with narrow eyes, the heroic men with chiseled jaws, or the bespeckled self-inserts with toothy grins. His style is unmistakable. These grounded yet also mythical human characters set against this cold, futuristic technology cramped with buttons and screens as they travel the immense majesty of the universe. Matsumoto wrote a lot of manga in both boys' and girls' magazines, but he's most well known for three. Space Cruiser Yamato, which he co-created, Captain Harlock, and Galaxy Express 3.9. Despite how relatively short each manga is, over the years they've had countless sequels and spin-offs, so it can be difficult to know where to start. But to me, the so-called Leijiverse isn't something you need a map to explore for yourself. Osamu Tezuka had a star system where specific designs would perform different characters, and his one-time assistant Matsumoto applied a similar tactic. His characters Harlock, Tochiro, and Emeraldus would show up in multiple series other than their own. But Matsumoto went much further. His stories would restart and play out differently. Timelines would reference or contradict themselves. Characters die in one movie but live in the next. In the Leijiverse, it's all canon. This can be very confusing, and yet Matsumoto's appeal remains easy to understand. Yamato is grand and exciting with operatic drama and explosive action. Harlock is so imaginative and cool, evoking mysterious intrigue and aching pathos. And 3-9 is beautiful and thought-provoking with smart commentary and cozy-ass vibes. It's all very simple. Leiji Matsumoto isn't called a legend for nothing. Ignore this lack of cohesion seems like a tall order, especially these days where continuity is king. Even when it's one ongoing series, fans beg for what is essential and what can be skipped for the luxury of the perfect experience. Unfortunately, art doesn't always work like that. I argue it shouldn't work like that at all. There are more ideal watch orders than others, but don't let that intimidate you from trying. It shouldn't matter where you start with the Leijiverse, what matters is that you start. I thought the best place to start with Matsumoto would be the beginning, the earliest TV entries. Yet for some reason, his work didn't click with me. Sometimes the original text, while obviously foundational, isn't the most effective. If you tried the Dune novel and didn't get it, but the movies clicked, that's great. Maybe now you can go back and enjoy the novel even more. That's the ultimate purpose of this stuff, right? I've realized it takes me a few repeated listens to really enjoy an album. Sure, I listen to fewer albums that way, but I feel myself much more enriched from prolonged exposure to media than something I binged in a day or two. Sometimes you'll figure something isn't for you and you'll move on quickly. But if you let that turn into an assumption, and you avoid creators or genres entirely, your taste will narrow unsustainably. I'm glad I didn't assume Matsumoto just wasn't for me. When Leiji Matsumoto passed away last year, I finally watched Adieu Galaxy Express 3.9, and it totally won me over after being lukewarm on the series for five years. The sprawling worlds, the drama, and I would never cry to a song, let's be honest. I am a man. I realized the movies were big enough, or rather the TV format might have been too small, 
to tell Matsumoto stories. To me, all of them work best on the big screen, that grand stage, that spectacle, as vast as space itself. Now. Eiji Matsumoto is the master of space. His inspiration reaches so far outwards many will never realize it. While his work might seem old-fashioned and intimidating, his messages and emotion will always manage to reach us. These are my favorites, but I encourage you to explore his universe of art, even just for a little while. Because so long as people continue to remember him and enjoy his stories, the journey will never truly end. I'm terrified.